Now that's deep work being put in on the the traps there, it. Randy. Not sure if you caught that. Not as much. My thumb would be sore if I was the masseuse. Yeah. The way he moved his arm like that. No. Probably yeah. good to drop an elbow in at that point if we're going with that much pressure. You saw that? Meanwhile, Adamo not applying pressure with the queen nine. Happy to limp, and Ponikovs wags his finger with an eight six. In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we are playing very early in a $200,000 buy-in Triton Poker Invitational. Pulls around to Michael Adamo. He gets in there. He battles. He is a super crusher. He is very difficult to play against. He opts to limp from the small blind with queen nine offsuit, playing about 200 big blinds deep. A lot of people think players like Adamo, who are known for their aggression, are overly aggressive in all scenarios. But from the small blind, out of position, playing deep sacked, you must be cautious in general, especially with your medium strength hands. Now, certainly you could raise this hand some portion of the time, but especially when you're playing with this rather odd blind structure of 1,000 small blind, 1,500 big blind, and a 1,500 big blind ante, you need to be limping with a large chunk of your range because you're getting incredibly, incredibly good pot odds. So Michael realizes this, of course. He's a world-class player. He limps over to Alex Panikovs. He gets in there. He battles really hard, too. He raises it up with the 8-6 offsuit, which is perfectly fine and reasonable in position, 200 big blinds deep. Adamo, certainly not folding. He's certainly not re-raising. He's calling. Let's go to the flop. Michael pays the price of admission. Yeah, these two have a lot of history in both the online and live felt. And advantage Adamo on the king-queen three right. board where he's got second pair, a delicate check over to Ponikovs. Could be one of those spots where we fire one, expecting the wide limp call range from the small that would just have to 45. check fold. Bet 4,500. Got mid pair. Standard play is to check call, see what develops. Cool. Flop comes king of diamonds, queen of spades, three of spades. Michael Adamo has second pair, no kicker. Panikovs has nothing. Michael checks. Panikovs bets. 4,500, which is perfectly reasonable into this 9,000 chip pot. Adamo, of course, calls. No other option is viable. Let's head to the turn. Adamo agrees. Hmm. And there's a pesky card as there was already one over to the queen. And now it's the dreaded ace that rolls off on the turn. Could very much be a part of Ponikov's raising kit from the big. Range advantage is to Ponikov's on this board. Then again, Ponikov just has eight high, no connection at all. It, it kind of depends on how much naked ace X would check call to flop for Adamo and whether to multi barrel this. This is nasty. 19K bet, Adamo with third pair, no kicker. Not much prospects, too, for river cards. And 19 into 22.5, though, is pretty meaty. It's very meaty. And he might be asking himself, how often would Ponikovs have barreled at the flop with simply ace high? On well, this you're right. King, man. queen, three board. Hence the check. And obviously, that is deeply disappointing. The turn is the nasty ace of clubs, making Adamo's hand way weaker. Adamo checks. Panikovs now. With the absolute zip and pip, goes for a 19,000 bet. Look, I played with Panikovs a little bit. He likes to get in there and battle hard, just like Adamo does. But I think I would have been a little bit more selective with my bluffs in this situation. I would really want to have a flush draw or a jack or a 10. So that whenever you do happen to get lucky and spike one of your cards, you have the nuts every once in a while. Now look, I'm sure Panikovs had studied this spot a lot. He probably knows he's supposed to have some total airball bluffs in this situation. Maybe I'm under bluffing in this spot. 
But I would think you want to be pretty polarized at this point, maybe with a good king and better to value bet. Um, notice I'm not saying you should only bet with an ace or better or two pair and better. You do get to value bet pretty wide here because Adamo is not going to have a ton of aces in his range, given he limped preflop and then check called the flop because if he had a bad ace, like say he had ace six offsuit, he may just let it go on the flop immediately. So I don't know. I feel like this bluff may be a little bit optimistic. Over to Adamo. It's a tough spot, but pair against aggressive player. Call and hope they don't blast again on the river. To Ponikovs, who has eight high and no hope. But the 10 on the river puts a four liner as this texture gets worse and worse for Queen Nine. Actually, you know, the 10 is actually more in the small blind check call turn range. You know, King Jacks, Queen Jacks. It, it's tough for Ponikovs to find another barrel. Also, think about this. If Ponikovs is representing the hand he had on the turn, Ace X, Ace Kings sets, they would be worried to fire one more once the four liner shows up. For him to fire means he's got like Jack 10 on the turn, some Jack X of spades. <laughs> wow, Ollie. We're not playing straightforward poker here. Not at all. And these are the kind of streets that the presence of Michael Adamo tends to guide us toward, whether we like it or not. <clears throat> what a hand. Is it King Jack, Ace Jack specifically that makes sense now? No, King Jack, most definitely not. I would be so shocked if Ponikovs would ever fire 19K into 22 with King Jack on the turn. So does it have to be the Ace Jack for Ponikovs to be able to rep a straight? Yeah, it would be Ace Jack, Jack 10. I'm trying Jack X of spades. Is that a thing? Because you got to keep in mind that he raised the limp preflop. So people don't really raise like Jack 4 of spades, for example. Damo, using a time bank, and this is brutal if you're Ponikovs sitting here with eight high, and he's got to suspect that Adamo's got a lot more than queens. The river is the 10 of diamonds, putting a four straight on the board. Adamo, of course, checks. Ponikovs, not afraid, bets three-fourths pot. And at this point, I don't actually mind the bluff. If you find yourself in this situation with no showdown value at all, Sure, go for it. I mean, unless he's drastically over bluffing the turn, which, you know, maybe he is if he has the 8-6 offsuit. If you're not over bluffing the turn a ton, then you probably should be using a lot of your no showdown value hands as bluffs on the river. Now, the only question is, is this a logical size for Panikovs? And I'm just going to presume Panikovs knows good, strong, world-class GTO poker, and he's going to use all sorts of bet sizes. I personally try to simplify things a little bit on my end, where in this situation, I personally, Jonathan Little, would be using two bet sizes, one roughly half pot bet size with a lot of medium strength hands like two pairs and sets for value, plus some jacks included, and bluffs of course, and then a big bet size, an over bet size with uh, jack X and some bluffs. That's what I would be doing. But as you get even better and better and better at poker, you can start using all sorts of bet sizes like three fourths pot. Maybe Panikovs uses only one size. I doubt it, but maybe he only uses three four spot on the river. It's tough to know. That said, I would presume you do want to have an overbet size in this situation, and that's where most of your jacks are going to be used. So maybe this will send off alarm bells in uh, Adamo's head, thinking hmm, maybe there aren't a whole lot of jacks in this range. That said, if there aren't a lot of jacks, it's going to be a whole lot of two pairs and sets. So let's see what Adamo does. Oh my goodness. Jeez. I thought he was reaching for <laughs> chips. It's another time bank. If he makes this call, it is going to raise eyebrows at this table. Yeah, that would make a big statement. I find it incredible that he's able to realize the situation and not fold yet. The 
Damo was thinking, how do you ever have a jack? And if he doesn't have a jack, he should not be betting wow, this river, right? Wow, Michael Adamo. Show him. Picks off Ponikovs, and that isn't going to go down smoothly for the Latvian as Aussie. Michael Adamo showing us in part why this is the table of death. After not all that long of deliberation, Adamo finds the call. I would have folded here, <laughs> unless I was just very sure Panikovs was getting after it for whatever reason. Sometimes when you're playing live poker, you can just look and tell, or you can feel the tension in the air, and you just know they're bluffing. Now, I don't necessarily think that's happening, given Panikovs is a world-class player, but I don't know. This is a crazy call, because I think that Panikovs is going to have a lot of hands like two pair in his range that obviously Queen-9 loses to. But hey, if you think your opponent's drastically over bluffing, call with all your bluff catchers. And if Panikovs is not bluffing with a hand like a king, then sure, all the bluff catchers make money. And this time, they made a lot of money. Few players strike fear into their opponents like Michael Adamo. What I want to know before we end today is I want you to write in the comment section down below, right down there, who you fear playing against the most or who you think you would fear playing against the most. You might as well write three names. Who are the players, the three players you fear the most? Let me know in the comment section below before we wrap it up. While you're down there, click the like and subscribe button. Good luck in your games. Have fun. If you bluffed with the 8-6 here and Adamo called you with the queen-9, I would have all the fear for the rest of my life. I'll talk to you next time.